Assalamu alaikum, welcome to the new intertextuality series. The point of this series is going to be demonstrating how the Quran is filled with intimate knowledge of Jewish Christian traditions, biblical and extra biblical. What's the point of going through all that? Well, we're going to use it uh, as evidence that the Quran is coming from Allah and not from the Prophet Muhammad, who was a Meccan who could not read or write. So for the first few episodes, inshallah, we're going to go through why it's so surprising that a Meccan Qur'an would have so much of this Jewish Christian knowledge. And we're going to show how the Arabs could not be the source of the Prophet Muhammad's knowledge. Uh, he could not have read these sorts of different biblical books and uh, apocryphal books, etc. and learned this information, nor could he have learned it from a teacher. And then in the episodes which follow... Inshallah, we're going to actually go through the different examples from the Qur'an which show that this Qur'an is coming from someone who is very, very knowledgeable in Jewish Christian traditions. Um, and again, we're going to use that as evidence. It's coming from Allah and not the Prophet Muhammad. So, in this episode 1, we're going to go through the ignorance of the Meccans. So remember, the Prophet Muhammad is a Meccan who cannot read or write. So let's learn about the Meccans. Let's see how they didn't even know the basics of the biblical texts or the biblical stories, etc., etc. This is also going to, of course, show that the Arabs are not the source of the Prophet Muhammad's uh, knowledge if someone wants to say that the Prophet Muhammad made up the Qur'an. So that potential source of this knowledge uh, does not work. Now, the uh, historical source we're going to look at to determine um, the ignorance of the Arabs, etc., etc., is going to be the Qur'an. Now, someone might say, well, I don't believe in the Qur'an. Well, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't believe in the Qur'an, there's still a lot of information that can easily be trusted historically from it, just simply because of the fact that the Qur'an was being recited out loud by the Prophet and his companions uh, within Mecca. And Mecca, they uh, disbelieved in the Prophet uh, they were his enemies, they would do propaganda against him, they would demonize him, etc. So it was a very hostile environment for the Prophet and his people. The Qur'an is not going to uh, say some obviously false claims in this hostile environment. It's not going to suddenly falsify itself. Um, if it did so, no one would believe in it, and it would be used as propaganda against it. Right? Now for those unaware of even the basics of the Prophet's life, Essentially, he grows up here in Mecca, and when he begins to preach, he preaches here in Mecca for around 13 years. And there were no Jewish or Christian communities here in Mecca, nor in the region overall. But in the region, you did have Medina, and there were Jewish communities in Medina. And the Prophet Muhammad, after preaching in Mecca for around a decade, immigrated, immigrated to Medina, where there were Jews. So I'm mentioning this because we are going to look at some verses which talk about the Jews here in Medina. And that is Qur'an which has been revealed in Medina, basically. Right? Generally, that's what's going on. So, if you see in the Qur'an, for example, Maqalat al-Yahud, and the Jews say, right, that's Qur'an that has been revealed to the Prophet while he's living in Medina among Jews. There were also Christians in Natran, and there was a time when some Christians... Uh, traveled from Najran to Medina to have a discourse with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Right? But overall, generally, in the region, you do not have these Jewish or Christian communities. And you certainly do not have them in Mecca, where the Prophet lived his whole life and preached for 13 years before moving to Medina. Also keep in mind that nowadays, uh, it is much quicker to travel between these sorts of areas because we have cars, we have planes, Right? And because of Wi-Fi and because travel is a lot quicker, information from one city to the other, right, in cities that are quite far apart from each other, uh, information travels from one city to another, etc., a lot quicker because there's Wi-Fi, because there, there are phones, radio, um, and uh, the distances are a lot quicker to travel because we have planes, cars, etc. But back in the 7th century, you did not have planes, you did not have cars. The travel from one place to another took a long time. And there was no Wi-Fi, etc. So it was a lot harder for information to travel from one place to another. right? And it would certainly take a lot longer. Also keep in mind, as we see in this chart, that almost all the biblical stories 
were already revealed in Mecca before the Prophet ever immigrated to Medina. They had almost all of them already been revealed in Mecca where there were no Jewish or Christian communities. So the first uh, piece of evidence we're going to look at right now to show that the Arabs didn't even know the basics or these ayat in the Quran which show that they did not even know the uh, basic biblical stories. So first example we have here is in Surah Hud which is a Meccan Surah after mentioning the story of Noah peace be upon him Allah says Tilka min ما كنت تعلمها أنت ولا قومك من قبل هذا فاصبر إن العاقبة للمتقين That is from the news of the unseen which we reveal to you. You did not know it, neither you nor your people before this. So be patient. Indeed, the best outcome is for the righteous. Now, of course, this is clear evidence that neither the Prophet nor his people knew the basic biblical stories because they didn't even know the story of Noah. Can you imagine if the Meccans actually did know the story of Noah and uh, the Qur'an was saying this out loud? Uh, out loud, the Qur'an was claiming that the Meccans didn't know the story of Noah. No one would have believed in the Qur'an and they would have propagandized against the Prophet based on this, uh, this ayah, right? The Qur'an is not going to obviously falsify itself like that. This trend of the Qur'an also occurs in other stories. So, for example, just before mentioning the story of Joseph, again, a very, very popular biblical character, the Qur'an says, We relate to you the best of stories and what we have revealed to you of this Qur'an, although you were before it among the unaware. Then you can see the story of Yusuf begins, Joseph begins, and then at the end of it, Allah says, ذَٰلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْغَيْبِ نُوحِيهِ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا كُنْتَ لَدَيْهِمْ إِذْ أَجْمَأُوا أَمْرَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَمْكُرُونَ That is from the news of the unseen, which we reveal to you. And you were not with them when they put together their plan, and while they were conspiring. So of course, based on the ayah in Surah Hud, the previous one which we saw about Noah, we know that the point of these sorts of statements is to remind the Prophet that he did not know these things, neither did the Meccans know them, right? You're not going to emphasize the fact that this is knowledge from the unseen, etc., if everyone already knows this knowledge. Similarly, with the story of Moses, they did not know it, as Allah mentions, وَمَا كُنْتَ بِجَانِبِ الْغَرْبِيِّ إِذْ قَدَيْنَا إِلَىٰ مُوسَى الْأَمْرَ وَمَا كُنْتَ مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ And you were not on the western side of the mount when we revealed to Moses the command, and you were not among the witnesses to that. وَلَكِنَّا أَنْشَأْنَا قُرُونًا فَتَتَاوَلَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأُمُرُ وَمَا كُنْتَ ثَاوِيًا فِي أَهْلِ مَدِيَنَ تَتْلُو عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِنَا وَلَكِنَّا كُنَّا مُرْسِلِينَ But we produced many generations after Moses and prolonged was their duration. And you were not a resident among the people of Madian, reciting to them our signs, but we were the senders of this message. The people of Madian, because of course in the story of Moses, he goes to Madian, etc. And that was mentioned previously in this chapter. وَمَا كُنْتَ بِجَانِبِ الطُّورِ إِذْ نَادَيْنَا وَلَا كِرَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ لِتُنْذِرَ قَوْمًا مَا أَتَاهُمْ مِنْ نَذِيرٍ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَذَكَّرُونَ And you were not at the side of the mount when we called Moses, but, but were sent, you were sent as a mercy from your Lord to warn a people to whom no warner had come before you that they might be reminded. Right? So the point here being mentioned that the Arabs, they didn't know these stories. They didn't know the story of Moses because no warner had come before. But now a warner has come. So now the story of Moses, they have been made aware of so that they may be warned. Although before they didn't have any warner. Similarly, uh, in the middle of the story of Mary and just before the story of Jesus. Uh, and of course, this is the, the story of when uh, Mary, Gabriel comes to Mary and tells him, uh, tells her that you're going to have a baby even though you're a virgin, etc. In the middle of that story, the Quran, Allah makes a comment, 
ذلك من أنباء الغيب نوهيه إليك وما كنت لديهم إذ يلقون أقلامهم أيهم يكفل مريم وما كنت لديهم إذ يختسمون That is from the news of the unseen which we reveal to you and you were not with them when they cast their pens as to which of them should be responsible for Mary nor were you with them when they disputed. So of course the Quran is not going to brag about how the Prophet wasn't there and they, he didn't know these things if he did know these things before and if the Meccans uh, knew these things generally. You're not going to brag about this sort of uh, general knowledge. Uh, if it was, for example, in Palestine where everyone knew these stories, you would not brag about this because these stories would be general knowledge. But but it's because the Meccans did not know them that the Qur'an is obviously bragging here. And we already saw before, it's quite clear that the point of these uh, ayat, these verses, is that the Meccans did not know this information. Uh, and again, even if you don't believe in the Qur'an, this is information that can obviously be trusted historically. Right? There's something known as benign data. So for example... You know, Paul, a lot of people consider Paul from the New Testament to be a liar. But when Paul is writing uh, someone a letter, right, and we can read his writing and we see that clearly he knows these people, he's writing to them a letter over some issues, even if you don't trust Paul as an author, obviously we can trust that, yeah, this historical Paul probably did know these people and these disputes that they're having, they are true, etc. So there's stuff about um, works written works, etc., that we can trust even if you don't believe in the author. So the fact that this is being recited out loud in a hostile environment is enough to trust this sort of historical information. We can clearly see the historical background for these ayat are a people who are ignorant of even the basic biblical stories. Just like when Paul is writing to someone and he's saying, oh, I'm writing to you like this uh, church community, etc. These are disputes we had before. Yeah, we know that Paul did actually meet those people and that's why he's writing a letter to them. He's obviously not just making someone up and writing a fake letter and acting like he knows someone and whatnot, right? Further evidence uh, that the Meccans were not aware of even the basic biblical traditions is that they didn't even know what a prophet is. So we see evidence of this in Surah Furqan, Surah Al-Furqan. وَقَالُوا مَا لِهَذَا الرَّسُولِ يَأْكُلُ الطَّعَامَ وَيَمْشِي فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مَلَكٌ فَيَكُونَ مَأَهُ نَذِيرًا And they said, what sort of messenger is this who eats food and walks in marketplaces? If only an angel had been sent down to him to be a warner alongside him. So of course, if the Meccans knew about you know biblical traditions, they would know that messengers eat food and they walk in marketplaces, right? Like Moses, Jesus, etc., they ate food, they walked in marketplaces. And these messengers, like Isaiah, etc., they didn't have, uh, you didn't have the human prophet and then an angel with him, right? This shows clear ignorance of the biblical traditions. Or if a treasure were to be cast to him, or if he had a garden from which he eats, and the unjust ones say, you are only following a bewitched man. So they think that a messenger should have a garden and, and treasures and whatnot. And so then the Quran has to clarify, Allah clarifies that actually messengers uh, do not do this. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا قَبَلَكَ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا إِنَّهُمْ لَيَأْكُلُونَ الطَّعَامَ وَيَمْشُونَ فِي الْأَسْوَاقِ And never did we send any messengers before you, but they used to eat food and walk in the marketplaces. So it's being clarified to the Meccans, this is how it's always been. Furthermore, in Surah Al-Isra, وَمَا مَنَعَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمُ الْهُدَىٰ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا إِذْ جَاءَهُمُ الْهُدَىٰ إِلَّا أَنْ قَالُوا أَبَأَثَ اللَّهُ بَشَرَ الرَّسُولًا And what prevented mankind from believing when guidance came to them, except that they said, did Allah send a human messenger? قُلْ لَوْ كَانَ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَلَائِكَةٌ يَمْشُونَ مُطْمَئِنِّينَ لَنَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَلَكَ رَسُولًا Say, if there were angels on earth walking around in peace, we would have bestowed upon them from heaven an angel messenger. So the Meccans, they are surprised at why God would choose a human prophet instead of angel prophet. 
So, of course, they're not aware of Moses and Abraham and the previous prophets because then they would have known, yeah, prophets are human in these traditions. But they are surprised that God would send a human instead of an angel. وَمَا رُسَلْنَا قَبَلَكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوهِي إِلَيْهِمْ فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And never did we send before you but men to whom we reveal. So ask the people of the reminder if you do not know. So here again Allah is clarifying only human messengers were sent before. Allah is mentioning uh, every messenger before he was, ma- he was a man. And then he's saying ask the people of the reminder if you don't know. The people or the reminder are the people of the book, meaning the Jews and the Christians. So Allah is telling the Meccans, angels were not sent before, human messengers were sent. And if you don't know this information, then go ask the Jews and Christians and they'll tell you, yes, we had prophets before and they were all men. They were not angels. So the fact that they're being told to ask the Jews and Christians if they don't know shows obviously that they don't know because they're the ones who are claiming that he should be an angel and whatnot. وَمَا جَعَلْنَاهُمْ جَسَدًا لَا يَأْكُلُونَ الطَّعَامَ وَمَا كَانُوا خَالِدِينَ And never did we make them a mere body who ate no food, for never were they immortal. So again, Allah has to refute, He has to clarify that human beings are not, or prophets are not supposed to be just bodies who don't eat, and they're supposed to be, you know, the Makkin Sad, a messenger should be immortal, etc. And all this is being clarified. Of course, the Makkins don't even know what a prophet is, clearly, so... They can't be aware of even the basics of the biblical traditions. Now, another thing you'll, you'll find in the Quran is often Allah will relate stories from previous nations, like the story of Noah's nation, Lot's nation, uh, Thamud, Ad, whatnot. And in here, Allah will mention um, events which parallel what the Meccans were saying. Right? So the point of these stories is, uh, one of the points is supposed to be telling the Meccans that those who disbelieved before you had the same objections as you. Right? If you read the Qur'an, this is very clear. And so an example of that is in Surah Mu'minun, um, while uh, relating the story of Noah, Allah mentions that the people of Noah said to him, فَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِهِ مَا هَذَا إِلَّا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُرِيدُ مِثْلُكُمْ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَتَفَدَّلَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَأَنْزَلَ مَلَائِكَةً مَا سَمِئْنَا بِهَذَا فِي آبَائِنَا الْأَوَّلِينَ so the chiefs of his people who denied, who denied said, this is nothing but a human being like you who wants to gain superiority over you. And had Allah willed, he would have sent down angels. Never did we hear among, never uh, did we ever hear of this among our forefathers of old. So the people of Noah, who the dialogue here is supposed to be parallel to what the Meccans were saying to the Prophet Muhammad, the people of Noah said, we never heard of this idea of human messengers amongst our forefathers. So of course, again, this is supposed to parallel what the Meccans were saying. وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِّنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ And they said, why was this Qur'an not sent down upon a great man from among one of the two cities? So, uh, Referring to Makkah and Taif. So, they think, the Meccans think that, you know, a messenger should have treasures and a garden and he should be an angel or he should have an angel with him or he should be like a great man, like not just anyone should be uh, chosen as a messenger, uh, meaning anyone who might not have a lot of wealth, but only someone who's extremely powerful or something like a tribal leader should be chosen as a messenger, etc. Clearly, they're not familiar with the previous uh, prophets like Moses, Jesus, etc., who, you know, they were not uh, some tri- tribal leader, uh, some king, you know, they they were not angels, etc., etc. So they don't, the Meccans don't even know what a prophet is. They're surprised that someone who's a human being is claiming to be a prophet. Nor do they know even the basic biblical stories. So, of course, the Meccans are completely uneducated about biblical and biblical uh, materials, extra biblical materials, yet the Quran is coming supposedly from the Prophet Muhammad, who is a Meccan just like them. So, can the Prophet Muhammad have invented this Quran when this is uh, the environment he was living in? He was just a Meccan like the rest of them, and yet the Meccans didn't even know the basics. So, how was he able to produce 
such a knowledgeable Qur'an. Further evidence that the Meccans didn't even know the basics is that they didn't even know what monotheism is. وَعَجِبُوا أَن جَاءَهُمْ مُنذِرٌ مِّنْهُمْ وَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ هَذَا سَاهِرٌ كَذَّابٌ أَجَعَلَ الْآلِهَةً أَجَعَلَ الْآلِهَةً إِلَٰهًا وَاحِدًا أَجَعَلَ الْآلِهَةَ إِلَٰهًا وَاحِدًا إِنَّ هَذَا لَشَيْءٌ عُجَابٌ they marveled that a forewarner had come to them from among them, and the denier said, This is a sorcerer, a sheer liar. Did he make all the gods into one god? Surely this is indeed something strange. So they think it's strange that all their gods have been turned into one god. So they think monotheism is strange. وَانْطَلَقَ الْمَلَأُ مِنْهُمْ أَنِمْشُوا وَاسْبِرُوا عَلَىٰ آلِهَتِكُمْ إِنَّ هَذَا لَشَيْءٌ يُرَادٌ مَا سَمِئْنَا بِهَذَا فِي الْمِلَّةِ الْآخِرَةِ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا اخْتِلَاقُ The chiefs among them went for saying, Carry on and stand firm in devotion to your gods. Surely, or certainly this is just a scheme for power. We have never heard of this in the previous faith. This is nothing but a fabrication. So the Meccans, they had never heard of this idea of monotheism, right? So they think it's strange that all the gods has been turned into one god. They think it's strange. They think it's, uh, they, they say we never heard of this before. So if they don't know what monotheism is, of course they don't know nothing about the biblical traditions. Further evidence is they don't even know the name Ar-Rahman, which is a name of God. So Ar-Rahman, we find it as a name for God in the Quran, but it's, it was also used by Christians and Jews. As we see in this paper, they mention that uh, Rahman, uh, it was used by both Jews and Christians. So you can read the text here. It was also used in Southern Arabia. The point is, it was used by Jews and Christians, and so it's found in the Talmud, the Targums, uh, Syriac, uh, and even in the Hebrew Bible, albeit in the different form, Rahum. Okay? So, of course, a, Jew, a Jewish, that, this, is how, this is one of the ways that Jews and Christians refer to God. So, we don't expect if the Meccans were aware of Jewish Christian traditions that they would be confused by this name Ar Rahman. Yet, when it's revealed in the Quran, we find that the Meccans were confused about it. And when it is said to them, prostrate to the most merciful, Ar Rahman, they say, And what is Ar Rahman? Should we prostrate to that which you order us? And it increases them in aversion. So, they hadn't heard about the name Ar-Rahman before the Qur'an. Right? And so, when they hear Ar-Rahman, then they associate it with the Prophet, and uh, they, they show arrogance, etc. But clearly, this was not a name for God they had used before. They were not aware of it. Say call upon Allah or call upon the most merciful. Whichever you call to him belong the best names. Okay. Say invoke. Uh, so basically the point here is being mentioned that Allah and Ar-Rahman are two names for the same God. And this ayah was revealed because once the Prophet took two names of God and an idolater said he claims to pray to one but he's praying to two. So they were confused. They didn't know that Ar-Rahman is the same, is, is a reference to the same deity Allah. So they knew the name Allah but they were confused about the name Ar-Rahman. So the ayah comes down to clarify Ar-Rahman is the same God. Furthermore, uh, in this hadith in Muslim, we see that the Prophet he said, write Bismillah Rahman Rahim and said, as for Bismillah, we do not know what is meant by Bismillah Rahman Rahim, but write what we understand, bi ismika Allahumma. So basically, this hadith is evidence that they did not know what Rahman means, even though the Jews and Christians used it. So if Jews and Christians were among them, right, and they knew these traditions, we expect them to know the name Rahman, which was used by Jews and Christians, but they did not know this name, which again shows us that they did not know biblical traditions. Further evidence is that the Quran refers to the Meccans, the pagan Arabs, as people who don't know. So, for example, in this ayah, 
وقالت اليهود ليست النصارى على شيء وقالت النصارى ليست اليهود على شيء وهم يتلون الكتاب كذلك قال الذين لا يعلمون مثل قولهم And the Jews said, Christians have no ground whatsoever to stand on, while the Christians said, Jews have no ground whatsoever to stand on, yet they read the same scripture. Similarly, the ones who do not know said the like of their saying. So the Arabs here, the Meccans, the, the pagan Arabs, we should say, the pagan Arabs have been referred to as the people who don't know. So you have three groups, you have the Jews, the Christians, and then the pagans are referred to as the people who don't know. Right? Similarly, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ لَوْ لَا يُكَلِّمُنَ اللَّهُ أَوْ تَأْتِينَا آيَةً And those who do not know said, if only Allah would speak to us or a sign would come to us. So this sort of title, people who don't know, has been used for the pagan Arabs. Which again shows us they, don't, they weren't even aware of the basic biblical traditions. In contrast to the Jews and Christians who had been given some knowledge before. As we see in this ayah, قُلْ آمِنُوا بِهِ أَوْ لَا تُؤْمِنُوا إِنَّ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ إِذَا يُتْلَى عَلَيْهِمْ يَخِرُونَ لِلْأَذْقَانِ سُجَّدًا Say believe in it or do not believe. Indeed, those who were given knowledge before it, when it is recited to them, they fall upon their faces in prostration. That the Jews and Christians have been referred to people who had been given knowledge before in contrast to the Meccans who did not know who had not been given knowledge before. So Allah is saying to these Meccans who had not been given knowledge, as opposed to you, the people who were given knowledge before, they believe in the Qur'an. Similarly, وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَأَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ أَبْلِغْهُ مَأْمَنَهُ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ قَوْمٌ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ and if any of the polytheists seeks your protection, then grant him protection so that he may hear the words of Allah. Then deliver him to his place of safety. That is because they are a people who do not know. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْا إِلَى مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ وَإِلَى الرَّسُولِ قَالُوا حَسْبُنَا مَا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا أَوَلَوْ كَانَ آبَاؤُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ شَيْئًا وَلَا يَحْتَدُونَ and when it is said to them, come to what Allah has revealed and to the Messenger, they say, sufficient for us is that upon which we found our fathers, even though their fathers knew nothing, nor were they guided. Tanzeel al-Aziz al-Rahim Litundira qawman ma unzira aba'uhum fahum ghafilun this is a revelation of the exalted in might, the merciful, that you may warn a people whose forefathers were not warned, so they are unaware. Again, this should be very, very clear evidence that the Arabs did not know the basic biblical stories. And why we're going through this in so much detail is because uh, there are some Orientalists, a number of them, who claim that, in fact, they did know, and yet all the Quranic evidence destroys them. Further evidence that the Meccans were not the people of the book, they were not Jews and Christians, is this ayah. And thus we have sent down to you the book, and those to whom we previously gave the scripture believe in it. And among these are those who believe in it. And none reject our signs except the disbelievers. So here there's something very key in the Arabic. It's been said that the people who were given the book, meaning the Jews and Christians, they believe in it. And then Allah says, وَمِنْ هَا And from these ones are those who believe in it. And among these ones, هَا is an obvious reference, if you know the Arabic, to the people of Mecca. Hence in the brackets here it says, and among these ones, meaning the people of Mecca, are those who believe in it. So, these ones, meaning the people of Mecca, have been differentiated. If you notice, they've been differentiated from the people who had been given the book before. Those to whom uh, those to whom we gave the scripture believe in it. And from among these ones, the people of Mecca are those who believe in it. So, the people of Mecca have been distinguished from the people who had been given the book. So, the Meccans did not have a book. They were not Jews and Christians. Also, 
uh, so after Islam comes, of course, uh, literacy rates among the Arabs go go up, uh, go up. You know, an empire forms, a new religion is here. Everything sort of transforms, right? And people, of course, they start to gain more knowledge even from the Jews and Christians because now the Quran has come, which is confirming a lot of Jewish and Christian tradition. And so they were uh, interested to know more, some more details, etc. So, and also Islam, of course, spreads to Palestine and all these things. So later on, of course, they become much more aware of uh, biblical traditions, the Arabs. Of course, after Islam, come knowledge. But what we see is sometimes we still see a clear gap uh, in the knowledge of early Muslims who, even though they eventually were exposed to these things after the Prophet Muhammad died and after Islam started to expand, right? Still, we see some huge gaps in their knowledge, which indicates that these things were not known in their tradition. So, for example, in the Quran, there's a story of the Prophet Elijah and uh, Baal. Baal was the... uh, idol god that the Israelites were worshipping and this is very 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 uh, well known for anyone who knows anything about the biblical traditions that you had Baal and that the Israelites were worshipping Baal and uh, God chastised them etc etc so anyone who's even a little bit familiar with the biblical traditions uh, would know about Baal and so the Quran speaks about Baal itself Baal uh, as well and Elijah and the battle with Baal etc where the Israelites started worshipping Baal instead of Allah. But what's interesting is in the ayah where Allah mentions, Will you call upon Baal and forsake the best of creators? Ibn Abbas, so this is from Tafsir Ibn Kathir, Ibn Abbas uh, Mujahid Ikrima Qatada and Asudi said that the word Baal means Lord Ikrima and Qatada said this is the language of the people of Yemen. And so, they thought a lot of uh, these early, these are great uh, explainers of the Qur'an, Ibn Amas, Mujahid, these are people who are famous for explaining the Qur'an, and they did not know that Baal was an idol that in the Hebrew Bible, the Jews had been worshipping for a long time. They thought it was just a word that means Lord. So, the fact that you have this sort of great ignorance, even after Islam comes, and even after these people start to be exposed more to Jews and Christians, and started learning these traditions, even then, the fact that he has these great gaps that you would not expect a people who know the biblical uh, texts and traditions to not know what Baal is, and yet we see these gaps in their knowledge, which again shows us that the Arabs going back did not know these things, right? This was not known in their culture, and that's why they end up ignorant about even these basic things, even as they try and get more knowledge about these things from Jewish and Christian sources. So inshallah, that's the first video. The point of it, again, was to show that the Meccans did not even know the basic biblical text, yet the Prophet Muhammad is a Meccan. So is he producing the Quran, which is so filled with this amazing awareness of Jewish Christian traditions? Is he the one who's producing this text, even though he's a Meccan, and the Meccans didn't even know the basics? At least we can say that clearly the Meccans are not his source. And it's very surprising that a Quran which is intimately aware of biblical and extra biblical traditions is supposedly coming from a Makkan. That doesn't really add up, and this is evidence that it's coming from Allah. Inshallah, in the next episodes, we'll go through uh, the idea that the Prophet could have learned these things by reading the Bible and extra biblical texts, that he had a teacher, etc. And then, inshallah, after that, we'll start to go through the examples in the Quran which demonstrate that the one from whom the Quran is coming is very, very aware of these things. He doesn't. Uh, you know, it's not that he has just superficial knowledge of the biblical traditions, but he is very, very knowledgeable in biblical and extra-biblical traditions. Inshallah, we'll see you next time.